you can see the lowest down close candle prior to the run up. Now again, all of these relative equal highs, we see a run on stops there and then it breaks lower. So the logic behind this is we want to look at the last down close candle prior to this run up that clears all the buy side liquidity. If the market trades lower than this low, this down close candle becomes my ICT bearish breaker. So now we're going to go forward and you can see the market does in fact trade up into that today and there's a resistance effect that takes place. We are now seeing on a 15 minute time frame another bearish breaker. See that? Relative equal highs, price breaks lower and then runs up, clears out all the orders that would be resting right above here. So what do we do again? Our eye goes to the last down close candle right before the run up. This is your bearish breaker again. Look at the sensitivity right in here. Notice it does not go just to the bottoms of these candles here and then trade lower. It trades inside of this down close candles range multiple times and then trades lower. Now the Asian range, we can classify that as 7 p.m. to midnight New York time. In your notes, whenever we're trading on Mondays, and this is one of the reasons why I don't like to trade on Mondays, but it doesn't mean I won't trade on Mondays. It just means one of the things that has to be in play and it has to fit, otherwise I won't trade on a Monday. The idea of the Asian range not being utilized on Mondays themselves. In other words, the Asian range that you would determine on Monday's data, in my school of thought, we do not consider that. And the reason why is the algorithm is actually going to look at Friday's Asian range. On Mondays, we refer to Friday's Asian range. So what we're saying is Thursday, 7 p.m. to midnight Friday, Eastern Standard Time. So with that idea, we can take the Asian range that's on the previous week's Friday and utilize that to get projections on how far the market can build up into a specific level of resistance, but it has to overlap with some other narrative. And that narrative would be these two levels up here being that bearish breaker. All right, so we've added the Friday Asian range the previous week, and I'm using the candles wicks and tails to illustrate how the classic view of the Asian range is interpreted. I do not always use the wicks and tails. I like to use the bodies of the candles, especially if they're very clear and discernible as they are here. So there is our Asian range. We're using the previous Friday's Asian range for Monday's trading. So it is being utilized for this trading day. All right, so we have the denomination for Monday's trading, the 16th of November, and the previous Friday's Asian range. Now, what you wanna do is start getting projections like this. So we have all of the Asian ranges stacked on top of one another. And you can see it goes right to the top of that high end of the breaker that we used as our initial narrative. So we have five Asian range projections on the upside that overlap exactly with a bearish ICT breaker. So what you're seeing here is the run up initially runs into the top of the bearish breaker and the Asian range that is stacked up. There's, there's five of them. And then from that point on, we see the market break lower, and then we have the same breaker idea on the 15 minute time frame. So the market trades multiple times after breaking below this candle right there, that starts the breaker. So when it moves away and comes back up, it's trading inside of this to mitigate all of the longs that were in here. Anyone that was long on a smart money level, in other words, traders on an institutional level, that were long here that may have been caught off guard, they can now mitigate those positions. It's not that they're buying it to push it up. That's not what takes place here. Okay, that's not what goes on. This is repricing and then this is mitigation. So all of this is the purpose of pairing up liquidity, buy side, sell side. So the market then breaks lower. What about this level down here makes it significant? Well, if you gotta look at this price run in here, now, I'm going to give you a moment to look at it. You tell me where there is a specific entry of volatility in all of this price run in here. In other words, where is there a flurry of excitement? Right in here. Okay. This is displacement. So here's Sunday's data. We're going to kind of like blur that out for a moment. 
this is all Friday's trading. So Friday's trading, where is the displacement? In other words, where is the market really trying to show a willingness to go higher? Right here. So your eye goes right to this down close candle prior to this run up because this displacement, the algorithm starts to run higher and then it trades back lower into this turning point right here. So we have this specific price level here. It runs higher, creates an imbalance. It comes down, rebalances that and trades right back into this bullish order block. Extend that through time all the way through Sunday. We don't really care so much about Sunday's data. And then we have the bearish breaker that trades exactly into the bullish order block right there. Then price runs higher, trades back down into the last down close candle. So we have optimal trade entry here in the New York session. So we have several components here. We have a market running up into on Monday to a bearish breaker and all of these Asian range overlapping. So the algorithm uses this range on the previous Friday when the bias is discernible. In other words, if we're bullish on the start of the week, Euro should trade higher. It doesn't mean it will absolutely do so. It just means that we go in looking for things that line up to build evidence to structure a trade around a narrative that we anticipate. So this idea of projecting the Asian range is higher. It's a specific measurement the algorithm will reach for. If you were anticipating higher prices on Euro, you could have used this scenario here to be a buyer on Friday of last week and using this idea as a target. And you would hold over the weekend if you were inclined to feel that confident about it. And if it traded up to this level here, which is the bearish breaker and all of these projected Asian ranges from the previous week, that would be a target or just before it gets to that level, or maybe at the low end of the breaker, that would be a target. So between getting in here on optimal trade entry with a bullish order block and getting out at the low end of this range here on Monday, today's trading, that's a pretty decent price run for a short term trade. Now, if you are a contrarian trader and you know that Mondays tend to be a consolidation retracement that sets up a continuation of a longer term price move, we could look at this area here as a short term contrarian short. And you can trade this right here when the anticipation it would trade back to this area here, which is highly sensitive. I mean, look at the bodies of the candles here. Yes, you have a small little tail here and a very small little tail on this one but it's going basically back into this candle. When we're looking at price, the price is gonna refer back to specific levels that are key in reference to specific elements of time. So in your journals, you wanna make a notation that on Mondays, we do not refer to Asian range. It's not important, it's not crucial, it's not required to find precision. You use the previous Friday. Now. The caveat to that is the Friday's Asian range is only useful if a bias is underway. That means, are we in a buy program or a sell program? What is a buy program? Buy program is simply we're in a bullish market and it's probably going to keep going higher. If we're in a sell program, then that means that the market's moving lower and it's probably going to continue moving lower. So we would use the Asian range in a bear scenario. We would project the Asian range lower to get potential overlapping with a key level like I've outlined here with the bearish breaker. Okay, so here's the previous Friday's trading. You have Friday's high, the low here, consolidation to the week, close, and then we have trading going into a new week, and then we have buy side liquidity resting here, and the buy side liquidity from Friday's high. Now, here's the Asian range on Friday for Friday's calculation, and we do not use Monday's Asian range time, okay? The algorithm is gonna remember and refer back to the previous week. And I want you to take a look at the Asian range here, okay, on Friday. So we projected up one standard range. So this is one Asian range measured above and stacked right on top of each other. Here's one Asian range below it, the second Asian range below that, and the third Asian range below that, okay? And this is all calculated on Friday's data. Now, if you carry these levels out into the future, you get the high here. What's the high on this candle? 1.1906 and zero pipettes. Well, that just happens to be the actual high of the day. The Asian range low here for three ranges projected lower. We have a range projection of 1.18009 pipettes. And we're off only by a very small degree in the form of 1.1800 and three pipettes. So in this case, I'm only off by six pipettes. That's not bad. 
The first factor that's most important when it comes to algorithmic trading is time. There are specific things that happen at specific times. And if they don't occur, there is no setup. It doesn't matter what price is doing. If the time element is not there and then price overlaps with it, those two things have to agree. But the first and foremost and most important is the time element. So if you look at this idea, we ran above Friday's high and above the initial highs that were forming here and during consolidation here. The market had a protraction above Friday's high and then slammed into this level right there. And this is what you get. Now, what's actually occurring here? The market sees the Euro flash PMI at 330. That's what this level is here. Okay, so the low forms at 330. Again, back to the calendar. At 330, we had good numbers coming out. 57.9 versus the 56. It's modestly better, but nonetheless, it's better. They pump it up and above Friday's high. One standard deviation on the Asian range above it. Using Friday's data, project that out in time. Bingo. Hello. So what happens after that? It hits it. That's where you would scale out, take profits, or completely collapse your trade. Or if you are a contrarian trader, you can look at that as an idea that, okay, we do have sell side liquidity down here. And Monday might happen to be a day where you have a little bit more retracement lower. This is why I don't like Mondays. Mondays tend to create the precursor to the weekly range. The algorithm extends price above Friday's high. Once it hits this specific high, what high? One standard deviation on the Asian range from Friday's data. At 945, this candle right there. What is going on there? Well, go back to the calendar. At 945, the US dollar has 56.7, much more improvement than what was forecasted at 52.5. So between the two here, okay, the dollar has much more quote unquote fundamental driver behind it being stronger or good for the currency. Again, this number here, if it comes out better than the forecast, that's viewed as a good or an underlying bullish scenario for the currency. Now that's not always the case. And that's why fundamental data by itself can hurt you. So you have to blend some things. The element of displacement here comes on the heels of a much better number for the dollar than that of that was bullish for Euro here. So the only thing the algorithm did here was allow the market to build up a protraction above Friday's high, hold price in here. What do traders see in that regard? They see bullish bull flags, okay? They look at this run above these highs, they think that's a bullish breakout. What is remaining in the marketplace after it gets above Friday's high? We have a single swing low here. So yes, that's a liquidity pool for sell side, but more specifically, roll back to Friday's data. We have relative equal lows. What rests below there? Sell side liquidity. So if they are engineering a run on Friday's high, that's tradable. You can be a buyer there. You can be a buyer into Sunday's opening and ride that up for 45, 50 pips. There's nothing wrong with that. So the market has a displacement lower running out Friday's lows and projects right down to three Asian range below the regular Asian range here. This is what I refer to as Swiss timepiece precision. 